So let me tell you what I decided to do today. I decided to reflect on the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But make no mistake about it, today I'm talking about you. We're going to look at Martin Luther King's life, but we're going to talk about your legacy. We're going to talk about your dream. We're going to talk about your life. And what I want to encourage you to do is take a moment to think, what has been your defining moment? Wherever your confidence level might be, how did it get there? Well, what defining moment did you have to make you have the confidence you have today or the lack thereof that you might have today? And my encouragement to you is, you got to start off with a vision. you gotta have, you got to have a plan. You have to see yourself in the future knowing exactly who is it that, that you want to be, what is it that you're striving towards. I mean, you're in college now, which is great, but I know for a fact this is not the end. This is not the goal. I mean, this is a goal, and this is a good goal. But surely, you, you've got bigger dreams past this, and this is just a, a route to get you to where you want to go. Once upon a time, I talked to a man by the name of John Maxwell. John Maxwell still alive today, probably one of the foremost leaders in leadership. And this is what he told me. He said, young man, remember this. There's going to come a day when you're going to be 89 years old. And at 89 years old, you're going to be sitting on the porch of your own house, looking back over your life, and chances are you're going to have one of two feelings. One, either you're going to have a feeling of total satisfaction. Why satisfaction? Because you did it. You lived the life that you wanted to live. You, you traveled the world, you fell in love, you started that business, you wrote that book, whatever it is. At 89 years old, you're not even going to be afraid to die. You know why? Because you know you already lived. Or you'll be 89 years old, sitting on the porch of your own house, looking back over your life with regret. Why regret? Because you had one life to live, but never really lived it. You let fear, insecurity, whatever people said about you, just stop you from living the life you want to live. And now you're 89 years old, and you don't want to die. Why? Because you don't feel like you ever really lived. That's the same challenge I give to you all today. 89 years old, I hope, comes for everybody. But it's what you do today that's going to make a big impact on what life's going to look like tomorrow. Can you look at your own life with your own insecurities, with your own fears, and not have a pity party, and look at all your accomplishments and all your potential, but, but don't get too high on yourself, but see yourself as you really are. But more importantly, can you see yourself as you want to be? Because your real major in college and life is to make it like you see it. How, how do you want to walk in the world in 10 years from now? What kind of confidence do you want to walk in this world with? What do we want to look like? What, what do you want to feel like? Because that's part of the vision. That's part of creating that vision so you know exactly where it is that you want to go and exactly who you want to be. And that's one of the greatest gifts that Martin Luther King had was he could see it as it was. But he already had a vision of what it could be. And now his main goal was to make it like he sees it. And that's the challenge that I have for you all. And speaking of challenge, any dream that you have, any goal that you have, there's going to be a challenge. I'm just amazed how many people quit, how many people give up. As soon as hard time comes, as soon as someone says something bad about them, as soon as things don't go right, all of a sudden they give up. Your number one challenge in life for everybody in here and, and, and reaching whatever goal you're trying to reach is going to be your own fears. I promise you that. Your, your own fears, your own insecurities and, and self-esteem. Point in case, if a person's self-esteem is right here, or let's say it's down here, this is where your self-esteem is. It doesn't matter how well life goes. You could get a great job. You could be in a great relationship. Everything go good. But if your self-esteem is here, you will find the drama to bring you back down here. You'll find the people who will talk about you enough to bring you back down here, to make you feel more comfortable where you are. But if you can raise that confidence, that self-esteem up here, you'll be amazed on how you can grow and a better chance to reach that potential. Here's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is it really doesn't matter what other people tell you. What, what other people tell you, it might affect you, but it shouldn't affect your confidence. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what other people tell you. That's not what stops you. What stops you is what you're telling yourself. Point and case. When you were sitting there, and I asked you the question, who here knows how to sing? Who stopped you from standing up? 
You stopped you. You told yourself, don't you stand up. You know you can't sing. And you just sat there. When, when I said, who knows how to draw? You try to tell me you can't draw a stick, man. Who stopped you from standing up? You stopped you. You told yourself, don't stand up, you can't do it. And my question is, how often do you do that to yourself? How often do you talk yourself out of the little things that are possible? How are you going to live your own dream? How are you going to live your own life if you're your biggest enemy that talk yourself out of what's possible? Remember 89 years old? What do you think 89 years old is going to look like at this rate? Regret. That's what it's going to look like. But if you could change your conversation with yourself, you could change your life. Change your language, change your life. I'm not saying you have to lie to yourself. I'm not, that, I'm not saying you have to tell yourself that you're the greatest in the world. But be honest with yourself. You may not be the greatest, but you can do it. And you can try. And you can get better. And you've got great potential. But whatever it takes, never talk down on yourself. I'm 45 years old. I know this to be true. There's going to be enough people in your life telling you what you can't do. You don't need to join in on that conversation. Amen. You, you need to be your biggest advocate. 